What is up guys, today I'm going to be bringing you guys a brand new uh, tutorial video. This is going to be on Final Draft 10. I have Final Draft 9 open, which is a professional screenwriting software that people in Hollywood tend to use when uh, writing their screenplays. People like James Cameron, Gilmore Del Toro, um, Carrie Fisher, who is on my uh, desktop monitor here, uh, was writing when she was writing and working with... Uh, you know, George Lucas with the screenplays and stuff for Star Wars. So this is uh, pretty much a universal standard when working with screenplays and stuff for Hollywood. If you want to be a screenwriter, you're definitely going to want to purchase this software. It's really helpful. I was a little bit hesitant um, when I was first starting out of uh, using this software just because I used Celtics in school and I really liked that because it was free and I didn't have to pay anything for it. But you can get uh, Final Draft like around the holidays for around $200. Right now it's around 245 but... I have to tell you guys that it's definitely worth the amount of money that you're going to be paying for it. I have both versions of the latest software on, and I don't think I'm going to be switching anytime soon just because they really don't change that much, but they do change enough to where it's a little bit of a drastic change. So right now, here's the typical layout for Final Draft 9. Uh, you've got your you know, your title page here that you can click on and create a, you know, your title for your screenplay. Then underneath, you've got the, uh, you know, your writer credit, whoever, uh, wrote the screenplay or if you're working with multiple writers you can obviously do that uh, based on you can put if they're based on characters created by a different person so, sort of like a producer a director or a, an author if you're doing a based on a book or anything like that and then underneath here is usually where you have your address for like phone numbers and email addresses and stuff like that um, so you can definitely put those there in the individual spaces so you can let people like producers and script readers know who you are when you finish completing your script and after you've sent it out to people. Um, now, the only thing you really need to know here um, in terms of the layout of Final Draft 9 is that it just gives you the basic format of how to write a screenplay. It gives you the margins so you don't really have to worry about creating these um, yourself in like a word processor, which if you're doing it on Word, you're going to have to really worry about that just because formatting is key. And if you're sending it out to a producer or a studio or something like that, you're going to want to have the correct margins and at least look like a professional screenplay. Um, so now we're going to boot up Final Draft 10 here, which is over here. So we're going to boot up Final Draft. Uh, I'm going to download that. Now, the interesting thing about Final Draft 10 as opposed to Final Draft 9 is that it does um, download your uh, updates for you. Final Draft 9 doesn't really do automatic updates, so you're pretty much just left with... Uh, and there's an error, so... You're pretty much just left with the latest version. I'm going to... Uh, cancel out of that, so I'm going to cancel out of Final Draft 9 just because I don't need it anymore. Bam. And we're going to go to title page. So the title page is really important. If you're creating a screenplay, you're going to want to have a really cool title to go along with your script. Um, you probably want to know what the title of your screenplay is before you start writing, but some people start writing and then figure out the title based on what the story is. Um, right now, we're not really concerned about that, so I'm just going to write test in the title description. Uh, so we're going to test. And then written by, I'm just going to put my name. Josh. If I was writing a full screenplay, I would obviously write my full name. That means first and last name. Uh, just because it's easy for the people to figure out who actually has the rights to this or who wrote the, the film. Um, there's nothing worse than having like a property that you don't know who wrote it and somebody didn't put their name on it. And then down here, you can obviously put your uh, address and phone number, which I'm not going to do because I'm not really worried about that. But here, just like the uh, basics of how to write in Celtics, the things you're going to need to know is interior and exterior. Now, interior is going to be marked with INT in the slug lines. Um, exterior is sort of like your outdoor locations, which will be EXT. Now, interior means interior, like the inside of a house or, you know, like right now I'm inside of my home and I'm working on a computer. So it would be interior, um, living room, and then desk if you want to put that as an even more of a description to kind of show you guys like... Um, where the scene location is within the film. And then you're going to want to write day or night, um, depending on what time it is, or even like evening or early morning, something more descriptive if you're going to go that. You don't want to do it too much just because it will confuse people. Um, but for right now, we're going to go with um, interior uh, dining room. And then we're going to go day. Now we're going to go with night on that. So this is just basically a slug line. This is kind of how um, 
it shows like the uh, showrunners and like screenwriters and like other people working on the project kind of where in the world of your story that your characters are going to be located. Underneath, you're going to write sort of an action sequence. So what's going on within the room if people are having dinner or people in a fight? Um, most, mostly you want to have like an action scene going on just because it sets up the mood of what's going on. So we're going to do a family sits um, a dining room table having a heated argument over lunch. So there you go. You want to keep it at least one to two sentences. If you can do a little bit more descriptive, that is always helpful. There's other intricacies, like when you're doing sound, when you're describing sound, you're going to want to caps um, the sound that is going in. So like if you have a giant, like um, like sort of a boombox going, you're going to write boombox in all caps, and then giant um, or loud noise as it's kind of coming out, just be a little bit more descriptive so people know what you're kind of going for in terms of the mood of the scene. And then underneath here, you're going to go to tab. And then you're going to write down the main character. So if I want to do like a different character in the scene, I'm going to change the character's name, obviously, and it's going to be in all caps just because that's how things are done. You don't really want to do lowercase or any of that just because you're doing the main character's name and therefore it's going to be in all caps throughout most of the script so actors can find their parts and therefore give you feedback quicker and that's what they're going to be looking for when they're reading the screenplay is where their place is within the scene so we're going to write jeff because you know my name is jeff i'm just kidding and then underneath you're going to have the dialogue and it'll automatically switch if you can see here between the uh dialogue so you can obviously change this manually from scene heading um action character parenthetical which is basically describing sort of like if they're laughing you're going to write parenthetical laughing and then another parenthetical and then that's going to kind of like show you guys all oh, this character's laughing within the scene so we're going to do that we're going to do uh, parenthetical or we're going to do laughing I don't know why I spelled parenthetical laughing and then we're going to space this out so it's in the middle of middle underneath the uh, character's name and then we're going to go to tab or we can also hit return as well and then you're going to go to tab and, and we're going to switch that to dialogue what the fuck is going on all right so that's basically how to start it off um, you're going to do that for the rest of your screenplay. You're going to write the you know, the scene heading. And then underneath, you're going to have the action of pretty much what's going on with the scene. So um, let's say uh, two kids fighting over a small toy in the corner of the room. And uh, Jeff gets of his chair and walks over to them. All right, so basically this is describing a scene where two kids are fighting over just basically a small toy in the corner of the room. This is giving some action towards the scene and showing that it's a pretty chaotic place that they are living in, and then that the main father figure character is getting up out of his chair to go kind of deal with the situation. Um, probably not in the most professional and father figurely way, I'm you know, swearing at the kids and stuff, but we're gonna add some more tension in here, so. Uh, Jeff's wife. Now, if you're going to have a wife character within the film script or like even a side character, you're going to want to create a name for them. But since this is just like a test, I'm just going to write Jeff's wife just because it's not really need to be too, you know, descriptive of what the character is. So we're going to write uh, kids. All right, so basically I'm setting up a little bit of a dialogue and argument between the wife and the husband. So basically Jeff's wife, Jeff, they are just uh, messing around with them be kids. If I don't go over there, they're going to break something, which is a pretty valid argument and reasoning for him to go over there and kind of deal and assess the situation. 
Um, this is basically the standard screenplay format. So I basically did a little bit of that for you. If you're switching in between different scenes and scene locations, like if you're moving between, you know, the dining room into the living room, then you want to write a uh, living room um, in the scene heading. Or if you're going to go outside, then you want to write where outside they're actually going to. Um, but this is basically the general ra layout. And what's pretty cool about Final Draft 10 is that also, it gives you sort of the amount of pages that um, you're working with and how, how far you've written, basically. So when I'm writing a screenplay, I'll stop a little bit and maybe, like, take a break from writing. And then I'll go get something to eat or I will get something to drink or use the bathroom or something or maybe watch a movie or watch TV. Um, this will basically show you how far you've come in terms of your screenplay. And it'll be marked kind of like by a little white line that kind of goes across the screen. Um, you can also um, collaborate with uh, different people on your screenplay. So if you want to have more than one person, just set up the host account and then uh, let the other people write with you. I think that's pretty cool, even though I probably won't use it. You've also got Story Map, which kind of lays out the beats between your, uh, your scenes and stuff that you've got there. There's other functions, but really this is the only thing you really have to worry about if you're going to be doing some beginning screenwriting work. You don't really have to worry too much about the extra functions and stuff. Um, to save the project, though, what you would want to do is go to File, Save As. And then if you, wanna, if you have a finished screenplay and you want to sort of send it out to somebody, you're going to want to go to uh, Save As PDF, and that will save a PDF file for you. And that way your friends can read it or somebody at the studio can read it, and, you know, that's kind of how things are generally done within the production. Um, there is a button here. I can't figure out where exactly. Uh, let me find it. Um, doo -doo 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 file. Oh, you can go and register your script with the WGA. Um, it sends you a direct link to the WGA in Final Draft. So if you go to File and you go to Register Screenplay, it will bring up the page that you know you go to to register your screenplay with the WGA. You can either choose Writers Guild West or East, and um, it'll be able to um, register you with the proper one. If you're going to California, you're gonna generally want to register with the WGA West. New York, I think, is a WGA East, and that way you kind of separate it out. Um, you can go and look on a map and see uh, generally like how you uh, should submit that stuff. It would definitely help you out a little bit, or you can just look and Google it on your own. Um, this basically gives you a description of like the general basics of what you need to know in order to submit stuff. And if you got questions and things that you want answered, you can obviously call this number down here. But um, this is where you go to uh, purchase Final Draft. I'm going to get out of testimonials here. Uh, Final Draft right now is at $249. When I bought it, it was around $200. And when I bought Final Draft 9, I think it was at like $130 or something like that. Maybe just because it was on a deal. But generally, um, they do go deals sort of like the holidays and stuff. So if you're going to want to get it, um, basically you're going to want to wait till one of these deals comes around, you know, on the holidays. And therefore, you can sort of... Um, pick this up at discount now they do have you know both osx windows and it includes 30 day money back guarantee if you don't like it you can obviously you know turn it back and then you get two uh, activations per purchase so you can put it on multiple different uh, computers if you want um, and this is basically just showing you kind of the movies that have used it like black swan um, scarface things like that um, avatar used it to write their screenplays with james cameron and the television series Lost with J.J. Uh, Abrams, who also wrote Star Trek, Mission Impossible, and Star Wars. Um, just to name a few. But, yeah, this is overall, um, I really do like Final Draft 9 and Final Draft 10, I think, for a professional screenwriting software. This is definitely helpful for beginners that really want to get into screenwriting. Every screenwriting book that I've pretty much read on screenplays and stuff like that and how to do story structure pretty much stated to get this software that you see here. It's definitely helpful. And it's simple and easy to use. All you have to worry about is hitting tab to change between, you know, your scene headings and things like that. Or you can just do it manually, which is also helpful. But I hope you guys uh, got the general feel for what Final Draft 9 and Final Draft 10 is. I could go further in depth on how to write the screenplay format for you if you definitely want to check this out in the future and get a better overview of how to write a professional screenplay. Um, or I could just do sort of like going through like a screenplay myself, like a test screenplay. And then, um, you know, working through it kind of like more detailed but let me know in the comments description the comments section kind of like what you guys want and i'll definitely work that out um, but hope you guys uh enjoy this sort of tutorial and in-depth review of final draft 9 and final draft 10 i really do again like this software i think it's very helpful for screenwriters so if you're looking to buy it definitely do buy it it's well worth your money um but as always guys if you like this and you want to see more in my future videos please rate comment subscribe we'll see you next video peace